What you see is not what you get Living our lives with a secret We'll fit right in Bet you never guess Cause we're living our lives just like all the rest Hello everybody, DK Guillotine here And welcome to my ranking of the Thunderman You might be saying to yourself, DK, why the fuck are you ranking this Nickelodeon sitcom? You've never talked about it once in your entire life Well, nobody watches my videos anyway So you know what? I'm gonna make whatever the fuck I want And please, do not not take this lightly when I say this next sentence. I fucking love the Thundermans. I love this show so much. I have been obsessed with it for the past couple weeks because I watched it a little bit as a kid. I watched the first couple episodes as a kid because it came out around the time that I was really into Nickelodeon sitcoms. And I watched the first couple episodes. I really loved it. I never stopped loving it. But for some reason, I kind of dropped off of it and stopped watching it as a kid. And uh, yeah, but... Uh, a couple months ago, I decided to go ahead and give it another watch, and this show starts out great and then just gets progressively more and more outstanding as it goes, and I have watched it a grand total of three times within the past, uh, like, two months when I started watching it, like, a couple months ago, and I can safely say that The Thundermans is officially one of my favorite TV shows of all time. This show is absolutely fucking outstanding, and if you have not watched it, please do yourself a gigantic favor and go watch The Thundermans because it is a fucking amazing show, and I am here to rank it because that is the best way I can think of to talk about it and this is going to be happening a lot for the next couple the next this is going to be happening a lot you're going to get a lot of these i'm going to be ranking all kinds of shows that i really love that i just want to talk about and the thundermans is one of those shows so without further ado let's get into it this is my ranking of the thundermans coming in at the number four spot there are four seasons of this show coming in at the number four slot for this list is pro is going to have to be season one for me now i really like season one and like i said before this show does never never has there's no bad season of this show this show is a constant stream of amazing from beginning to end and some and then it just kind of goes up like there's it just starts really great and just gets better and better and better and better as it goes and season one for me is gonna have to be the weakest because season one is the one season that has the least impact on the show overall the other seasons of this show just keep the just progress the story so well and just keep it going and keep bringing more things and more things to be interested in to like and to fall in love with but season one doesn't really have much there's not really any established like you don't really get very many like established characters in season one all you really get is the just the start of the show you get to watch uh, you get to watch these these superheroes like you know try and find a try and live like a normal life in this little suburban town and it's fun you get then you know they go for these uh they go for a very common approach to the Nickelodeon sitcom where they go for these kind of episodic situations that just last one episode and it's kind of harmless 90% of the time it's I don't know some kind of crush thing or something like that you know be normal teenager stuff and they always do a great job with it but there's really nothing to really latch onto in this season this is like the one season of the Thundermans that besides the I think you could watch the the first episode of this and then kind of just like not even bother but you shouldn't because it's still really great like every episode is still really great but there's not much in here that really like stays with it for the whole thing you know you get the introduction of phoebe and max obviously the dynamic phoebe is the good one max is the bad one and they kind of go off of each other sometimes phoebe who's the good one does bad stuff sometimes max who's the bad one does good stuff you know it's all it, it all kind of works very well for that and you get that a lot in this season which is really fucking great and there are some fantastic episodes in this season i believe ditch day is in this season which is one of my absolute favorite episodes i love ditch day uh so yeah season one is fantastic but the other seasons of this show really just offer so much and another thing about this se about this season is it doesn't have much of a finale I think the closest thing to a finale this season has and honestly I couldn't even be remembering the song I think is the Haunted Hathaway's crossover I could be remembering that wrong um but I think the season one finale is the Haunted Hathaway's crossover Haunted Hathaway's good show by the way not too bad um but uh, that, that while a good episode, the Haunted Hathaways crossover, is a good episode, and I do like it, the other season finales of this show are, like, some of the fucking best TV I have ever seen, period. Not just Nickelodeon sitcoms, just the, the amount of amazingness that is in the other season finales of this show. It blows this season finale out of the water, and that's the main reason why season one is going to be number four for me. So, number four is season one, just because there is, this is, this is honestly, like, it really easy for me, because while I still think season one is great, the others are just on a class of their own. So, 
there you go. Number number four is going to be season one. Coming in at the number three spot in this list for me is going to be season four. Now, I really do love season four. It's a really, you know, in this season, you get Max, who has given up his evil ways. He is all good guy now. He wants to be here. He wants to be on the Z-Force with Phoebe. And that is what you've got this whole season. You've just got Phoebe and Max trading to be on the Z-Force, trading to become amazing superheroes. Max is full on. He's completely abandoned his evil ways, becomes a really great character. But I have to be honest, the reason why this is number three is because I personally think that this show is a little bit stronger, just a little tiny bit stronger, when Max is the villain of this show. Max is such a great character, and the fact that he's one of our main characters and is also basically the main villain of this show is just so brilliant and works so well that when you lose him in season four, you kind of feel a little like, like, the, the show just kind of dips just the tiniest bit. Max is still great in this season. I absolutely love him. He's a great hero, and you even have the amazing, one of my absolute favorite episodes of the show, uh, uh Thunder in Paradise, where Phoebe becomes the villain of the show for this episode, and Max has to stop her, and it really is an outstanding episode, one of my absolute favorites, and you really get to, like, you really really start li liking Max a lot more as the hero once you get to that episode and from there on out it's pretty much perfect but I can't deny that Max as the villain is just way more interesting to me like he's just such a he's just such a not really evil because the thing with Max that's so great about Max is he never really comes off as completely evil the whole show you like Max is always like it's not a face I am evil but the whole time you're like, no, this guy is, he's, he's a good person deep down at heart, and that is why I like him a lot, even though he is, you know, always fucking everything up for people, but... This season is still a lot of fun. I absolutely love season four, you know. I really love um, uh, Banished, I think is what it's called. That episode is so fucking great. I love that episode so much when the Thundermans, they kind of they kind of blow it with the town. The town don't really want anything to do with them anymore after their secret was revealed from the ending of this, from the season three finale. And, um... And they get banished to Antarctica, which was like, yeah, and they're like, the life, their life just fucking sucks, and you're like, wow, this sucks so much. And then you get uh, that awesome scene when they go back to the Hidden Bill, and they kind of take it back, and they kind of, uh, like, they give kind of the middle finger to the hero league, they're like, we're not leaving, you can take our powers, whatever. And then they obviously, like, stage it all, and they go outside to, like, take all the powers just to, just to fake the town, and they actually didn't take the powers, they just left them there so that all of the town would think that they're not superpowers anymore and then fucking Sherry comes out of the bathroom because of course the only person who needs to know about the Thunderman secret is Sherry that was just such an awesome touch man because I was so happy at the end of season two when Sherry finds out the secret of finds out the secret of them um and it made me so happy when she comes out of that bathroom and is like I heard everything goodbye <laughs> it was I love that so much because Sherry is like one of my absolute favorite characters I love Sherry to death and I just think it was so wonderful that they made that they kept it to where Sherry was the only person who knew about the secret. That was just such a great touch, and I really love that episode, man. And, uh, yeah, season four, while it does kick ass, it just kicks a little bit less ass than our final two entries, which are, like, two of the best seasons of television that I have ever seen in my life, mainly because of their season finales. But let's get into it. Coming in at the number two spot on this list is going to be... Season two. Now, the only reason season two is not number one is because season three... Had, which is obviously season three is number one because you know the process of elimination the only reason it's not is because season three has a character season two is lacking that character but season two is such a wonderful season of this show because this is like you, you, you're continuing the story you got you kind of go off it's kind of just like bleeds from season one right into season two there's not much of a gap between the two like there is with season three with, with season two with season three and season three and season four um like those all really have a definitive mid beginning, middle, and end. But season one just kind of, but season one just kind of bleeds right into season two. Not really much changes uh, between the two seasons. And you know, you just kind of kind of keep going with it. You kind of keep going with those kind of episodic situations. There's some pretty great ones in here as well. Um, I'm trying to remember. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just because. I'm just going to throw up a couple episodes uh, over here on my Paramount Plus account just to, you know, talk about them a little bit. Because I can't remember exactly which episodes are in Season 2. Like, I'm thinking of some in my head, but I just want to make sure because I don't want to get it wrong. 
Yeah, okay, so I was, I was wrong about the Haunted Hathaway's crossover. That is season two. Season one really just doesn't have a finale. So, yeah, that just another adds more to the reason why I think season one is pretty easily the number four spot. Because there's not, there's just not much about season one to really latch on to like there is with the other seasons. But, uh, looking at some of the episodes from season two, man, there are so many amazing episodes. Um, Shred It Go, which is the episode where Phoebe kind of, uh, go, like, Phoebe just really wants to go to this MKTO concert. By the way, MKTO is a real band. I looked them up after I watched the show because you know that American Dream song is so fucking great and yeah they're a real band you can actually listen to them they're pretty fucking great I've, I've been listening to them a lot lately uh yeah that's a really great episode and you get this um, oh man that episode is so touching because like you know everything kind of works against Phoebe she gets she gets the she gets these tickets to go to this concert that she really wants to go to and then Max fucking steals them from him because he's a dickhead but then Phoebe is the one that ends up having the great night because she gets the private concert at uh, Splat Burger which is just so effing wonderful and Max is obviously just getting having the worst night of his life and that really is a fucking great episode I really love that one uh, Blue, uh, Blue Detective is pretty funny as well I like that one kind of a, uh, a murder mystery except not a murder mystery at all it's just a really really great season all the way through but then you get to the season finale of season 2 and this fucking episode just rules so hard man this is it's, it's either this or the season three finale that I think is the best episode of the whole show because the se these season finales are just so outstanding. It, it, it truly is like, it's absolutely insane how good this show got within one episode. And this season finale is just so great. You get the introduction of Chloe, who is my favorite character of the whole show. I love Chloe to death. And uh, then you get all the all of this shit goes down with Dr. Colosso. They kind of lure him back to the villain league because they want to take him away because he's, uh, he well, they don't know that he lost, but he's not really a villain anymore. They want to kick him out of the league. So he throws Max under the bus and Max gets, uh, Max gets attacked by the villains and they're about to fucking kill him by feeding him to hermit crabs and that shit traumatized me as a kid and... Yeah, and then, of course, you get Phoebe, she comes in, she tells, uh, Ch Ch Club, the Cherry finds out the secret, which was such an awesome thing that they, that Cherry finally found out the secret, and uh, I, that was just such a, a great moment as well. And then Phoebe obviously goes in to save Max and Dr. Colossal, which was so amazing. It's like the first time you really get to see Phoebe in action and really, really, like, grow herself as a superhero, which is why it leads so well into season three. Uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely fucking love this episode. Like, I cannot stress that enough. The introduction of Chloe, the, uh, the battle, the, the, the battle at the end with Phoebe and, uh, and King Crab is so awesome. And then you get just everything about this episode rules, man. It, it's like the first episode that really progresses the story forward. Like, season one and season two, while they're all, while they're great, they just kind of keep going and they don't really progress the story forward at all. But then you get to this episode, and this is when this show just takes off. Like, you get... Season 1 and Season 2, it's like all up here, it's like all A tier, A tier, A tier, A tier, A tier, and then you get to this episode, and from here on out, the rest of the show is like S tier, because this show, this is the first episode where it really starts to carry the story forward, and it really is something special, man, but... With that being said, we have to go into the number one, which is season three. Season three of the Thundermans is just outstanding. Like, I cannot, I cannot say this enough. I know I said that it's hard for me to pick between the season two finale and the season three finale, which one's my favorite, but I think it's got to be the season three finale. The season three finale of this show is one of the best episodes of, the te of television I have ever seen. And honestly, the whole season is. Like, this whole season, this season starts off with Phoebe becoming the protector of Hiddenville. She is a full-on superhero now. She is protecting Hiddenville. It's so great. Uh, I absolutely love that because she's such a great hero and such a great character and I love Kira Kosserman in the role. She's so wonderful and Max is still is still on his villain streak. He's doing shit and it kind of becomes like that once again like that dynamic of Phoebe and Max kind of going at each other constantly like going going at each other. It's like it's like uh, it's like Gustavo Fring and Walter White in season four of Breaking Bad. They're just constantly going at each other and that's what it is with uh, with Phoebe and Max. It, it really is a great dynamic but this whole season you constantly get these things with Max. Max, like, he has the, he has these constant moments of humanity with Max. Like, Max has always been the villain of this show. But then, you get to season three, and he gets a band, he gets a girlfriend, and you start real, you start seeing it. Like, Max doesn't, 
Max is not a completely evil dude. He, he cares about his bandmates. You get that one episode where he kind of ditches his band uh, and starts hanging out with like thieves and shit. And then he realizes that he, that he wants to be their friends and he goes back to it. And that's that subtle little moment of humanity that Max shows. And then you get another episode where he gets a girlfriend. He starts, he gets Allison, starts hanging out with her. He's like, no, she's not my girlfriend in the, in the game night episode. And then, after he realizes that he that he actually does care about her, he he goes for it. He calls him, and once again, you get that subtle moment of humanity for Max. So Phoebe is out saving the world, protecting Hiddenville, being a full-on superhero, and Max is slowly starting to realize that he's not a villain, that he's actually a good person. All to lead up to one of the best episodes of television I have ever seen, the season three finale of this show, Secret Revealed is is on another level like this episode is like s plus 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 this episode is so outstanding because first of all what happens in this episode you get phoebe she takes down a uh, lady web and becomes a full-on superhero she's now known as thunder girl and everybody looks up to her everybody loves thunder girl the protector of hidden bill and she is a full-on superhero and you're like wow this is this is so great it's really progressing and then you get dark mayhem who is like been who's, who the show has been building up for three seasons now dark mayhem's arrival and like and what he's gonna do when he finally breaks out and it's such a and it, like they build it up so well and then they get to it and dark mayhem is like wants to wants to recruit max he wants to make max a villain like max has always wanted to be and he's like all you have to do is take phoebe's powers use this orb and he take and take this and takes phoebe's powers and you will be a villain like you've always wanted to be and you have that amazing and you have that uh and you have that amazing scene with um with max and he goes to the the little secret hideout which was fucking hilarious i just blew up another car in the drive-thru people are starting to ask questions <laughs> Two, one pickle per customer. I love it. I love that shit so much. Dark Mayhem is such an amazing villain, man. And then, um, and yeah, he, 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 he recruits Max to get it, to take her powers. And then you get the way this show just, like, it just keeps fucking going. Like, first, you get Phoebe, who finds out, like, who finds out that Max is going to take her powers, and she takes his powers. Then, Max is, like, caught by the, by, uh, by Thunderman and Electris, or his, his, the, the mom and dad, and they fucking, they take everything from him. They lock him in his lair, they take everything from him, you're like, holy shit! Max just, like, lost everything! He doesn't have powers anymore, he doesn't have his lair anymore, he doesn't have Dr. Colosso anymore, and then, to make it even worse, he immediately gets his powers back thanks to Dr. Colosso, and he locks every single one of them in the house and they can't escape. He takes all their powers, he takes all their powers away from them, locks them in his house so they cannot escape, freezes the whole house closed. You're just like, this is a Nickelodeon sitcom, why is this so fucking crazy and epic? And then, oh my god, like, this is all absolutely outstanding. You're just sitting here like, oh my god, I cannot believe this is happening right now in this show. Because it's so suspenseful, and the suspense just keeps building and building and building. And you get Max, he breaks out of there, takes all his family's powers. Like, all of these characters that you love so much, you see them all get their powers taken away, and they get trapped in that freaking house. And then, Dark Mayhem shows up, Max shows up at the prom to take Phoebe's powers, and he's got, he's got her there, he's literally got it all. He's sitting there with his freaking villain uniform and Dark Mayhem is there and he's like, Take her powers and you will be a villain, like you've always wanted. And then you have that absolutely out-fucking-standing scene when Max realizes that he doesn't, that he actually isn't a villain. You have that amazing scene when Phoebe, when Phoebe's like, Allison and your band, you really want them to be enslaved by this guy? And then Max, you just see that look in his eyes and Dark Mayhem's like, You're this close to having it all! And Max is like, I already have it. And then he just turns around and gives all of his powers back. And they fucking, oh, it's, it's so good, dude. Because, like, the whole season, you're building up to it. You're building up. You know that Max doesn't want to be a villain anymore. You can see the little subtle moments of humanity that he shows. And then you get to this final episode, and he does that. You have that moment. And it's just, it's it's absolutely outstanding. And then you get the fight between the Thundermans and Dark Mayhem. They all have each other's powers because they all kind of fucked it up. And it's such a great fight overall. And it's 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 outstanding. Like, I cannot say that enough. This episode is so unbelievably good, dude. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what happens. And then from that point on, Max doesn't want to be a villain anymore. He's completely given up his evil ways, wants to be a hero now. And then, you know, you bleed right into season four. And, man, just, I just, I got nothing more to say, man. That season three finale is so fucking outstanding. Like, 
I, I know I would constantly go back and forth with myself in my head, which was my, what's my favorite episode, the season two finale or the season three finale. But no, I'm announcing right now, I'm going on record right now, it's the season three finale. That episode is just so... That episode is so outstanding. And then you get the Thunderman's secret revealed as well. Like, you get all that that I talked about. And also, their secret is revealed in this episode. This episode just pulls out all the stops, man. I just... And that, that season finale is the ultimate reason why I think season three is the best season of the show. And also the fact that, you know, you just get those, it's so brilliantly done with Max and him, like, slowly realizing that he doesn't want to be a hero. And, it, and like, when he turns on him at a time, because the whole show, he's the villain of the show. And then when you get to season three, when you get to this episode, and he turns on a time, you're, you're not just like, oh, what the hell, why would, why would he just turn like that? That doesn't make any sense. No, you absolutely know why, because the show did such a great job in building up throughout season three that he does doesn't, he's not actually a villain, and it's, I, I, I got nothing more to say, the Thundermans is so, is so absolutely outstanding, and uh, yeah, that is my ranking of the Thundermans, everybody leave me down in the comments down below, what is your ranking on the Thundermans, uh, do you love this show as much as I do, do uh, you agree with me that season, th th that the season 3 finale is the best episode of the show, uh, leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, maybe let me know in the comment section down below, uh, I will definitely be doing more of these, because I have, there's a ton of shows that I want to talk about, and, uh, yeah, these, I will definitely be, make, make, be making more of these because these are just a great, a great way for me to talk about, uh, about these shows that I absolutely love. So, there you have it, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And this is DK Guillotine, uh, signing out.